I was a student at De Montfort University, um, finishing my degree in 1996. And um, at the end of the year show, Ken Shuttleworth used to always come down because he was a student at De Montfort as well. <coughs> always used to come down to the end of the year show and sort of, dare I say, hand pick a few people to come in for interviews. So there was a few of us that all came along um, that summer. It was a real sort of high tech kind of movement that we were kind of following which obviously Norman was leading. Rogers, Fosters, Grimshaws, <coughs> Yank, Applicate, the Future Systems, they were all kind of like our, our idols at that point. So we we're all sort of studying their buildings, touring around, seeing them all and things like that. So it was very much a sort of a high tech school. When I got here, there was, I mean, the studio was much smaller, there was about 180 people. Going from a kind of a student culture where you're sort of having design crits, you kind of expect walking into an office it to be completely different. It, it was exactly the same. It was, you know, working sort of day and night, a huge amount of enthusiasm. Every project was fantastic. You were building sketch models. It was, you know, it was actually quite similar to being a student in some regards. And it was this fantastic studio culture. We were all in this space, pretty much. We all sat in here. So everyone kind of knew everyone. The culture's exactly the same, which is kind of exploration, everyone getting their hands dirty, building sketch models, getting involved, critiquing it. And that was really cool coming as a student because you kind of thought, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you wouldn't be involved in everything, but you were building these models, getting involved in reviews, hearing everything, you know. So it was, yeah, it was being critiqued, like being a student, so it was fantastic. The first project I worked on was actually um, a transport interchange in North Greenwich, which mm -hmm. was, a long time ago and that was very fitting into an existing model of transportation. It was a transportation hub bringing sort of the new Jubilee line connecting with the, the bus transportation system but it was still you know a standard system. Recently we've been working with companies like Nissan on like how do you electrify the, an, um, you know, a mobility system, an autonomous drive. So it's a completely new thinking process about you know battery technology, energy distribution, and how that can fit into an urban fabric. I think that's a really exciting future, you know, and how it's going to change cities and you know urban design and you know um, just yeah you know the reduction of cars on the street the fact we can actually take back control of the streets and actually become you know more of an urban playground for families and children and i think that's super exciting how you know the mobility is massively changing at the moment the next um, 10 years are going to be a huge change not just for new urban design but actually existing cities and how they're going to actually have to evolve and meet this changing change that's been an amazing evolution. So, you know, really taking a standard office specification budget and creating an amazing workplace. You know, there's lots of urban spaces, response to the urban fabric, creates dynamic spaces for it and creating like a vertical campus. It's a place where creation takes place. So much more raw -er than projects like um, Apple Campus, which were very refined was able to kind of work within the constraints of the project and I think it's a very relevant project. Very, very skillfully manoeuvred thinking about what the client wanted and creating something very special and I think from an urban point of view quite amazing. It sits on top of the transportation system, you know, pretty much everybody that works there, hard, hardly anyone drives. It's a, you know, a great mixed-use project, you know, set in an urban fabric. The client wanted to create some form of installation that sort of celebrated sort of building and they weren't sure if it was a technology piece or an art piece or whatever and it was really amazing to watch Norman actually craft the building around the pieces so even though you had sort of Jenny turn up with her ideas it was really interesting to see how Norman was not just saying right that's a piece of artwork which kind of gets added to the building we're now going to modify the building to incorporate that piece of artwork um, so that was fantastic. Comrade Shawcross was amazing though. That's probably one of the best fitting pieces in the building because it works so well within the space because of the reflectivity. You can see every floor within that triple height space, the winter garden. You can see the movement of the people in the escalators. You can see the trees reflected in it. And then you've got Jenny Holzer reflecting above you. So they're two really different pieces, but it's amazing how they work together really well within that building. Every project's a new challenge, a new kind of opportunity. It's, it's not the same project rolled out time and time again. About finding what the problem is, meeting the client, 
lots of communication, really getting under the skin of what the project's about and then trying to come up with the best diagram and then testing it, testing it, testing it. And if it's not right, throw it in the bin. It's the level of precision, investigation, thoroughness, you know, working hard. It's never the right immediate solution is the right one. You just have to keep working and keep working and then having an instinct when it's not quite right. And I think that's come through on a few projects, you know, where it's going down a route. And I think he's a real master at actually, you know, identifying we're not quite right here. You know, we have to reevaluate. We have to go back and actually get to the sort of the, the basis of what the project's about.